For the young men and women who are graduating today, this is the commencement of a life rather than the end of a college course. So we call it that, commencement. For many years, I have seen the young men and women of a graduating class go out into a world that I knew would welcome them. They've had a reward for them in abundant proportion to what they gave to the world. Today, my young friends, I'm sending you into battle upon a field half lost unless you half win it. You have the youth and the strength the courage and the faith, the minds and the hearts. Therefore, I send you to find the grail. Pa, not yodeler. You wouldn't call Bing Crosby or Rudy Valley a yodeler, would you? Why wouldn't I? I'd be calling them more than that if your ma and sisters were out of earshot. Oh, nobody in California's out of earshot when you raise your voice. Come along, girl. But listen, Pa. Listen nothing. You're not going to New York. You're going to Hawaii with us. But everybody in Hawaii croons, That's pa. what's the matter with them. Hiya, Chris. Hi, Joe. But, darling, if you must go on the stage, we have such a good stock company in Azusa. Oh, Mother, you've simply got to understand. I'm going to be an actress, a real actress, not just a... Oh, well, Broadway's the only place. Hello, Pete. How's Hi, tricks? Fine, fine. I've simply got to get to Broadway, Mother. Oh, here comes Freddie Wales. Isn't he just beautiful? Well, I wouldn't exactly call a man beautiful. Hello, Mad. Hello, Freddie. Mad's darling. I'm afraid my piano lessons aren't going to be oh, enough to money, pay money, for... money, money. I'm not going to be poor, I'll tell you that. That's another reason I'm going to New York. Well, I... I might ask your grandmother... Oh, well, you've simply got to, because... Oh, I wish this robe fit a little more. Hi, Madge. Gee, you look swell elegant in that kimono. Oh, do I, Terry? And another reason, Mother. Catherine's going, and, and Chris, and... and Mac. Hello, old grad. Hello, redhead. What you reading? A letter. If it's personal, I'd like to see it. I wish they'd have come. So do I. This is one day when you want your parents. I'm sorry, Fiery. However, never knew mine. Too young. So I can't miss them. What you don't know doesn't hurt you. So they say. True, isn't it? No. Nope. Hmm? Which is it? No, hmm? Or yes? No. Nope. You know, this has been more than college to me. It's been the only home I've really known. Well, I still have children, dogs, and strangers to love. Somehow, I never think of you as being lonely. I didn't know you thought of me at all. Go away, Miss Furness. Won't, Mr. Thring. Do you? Sure. Really? Lots. Well, what do you think, besides thinking, you think I'm not lonely? I think you're Oak. You're a great pal, Fiery. I don't know what we'd all do without you around. That makes me a sort of mama but not exactly what you'd call a hot mama. Chris. Huh? I'm wondering what kind of a girl you call a hot mama. Here she comes. Oh, Catherine, Chris, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Mother Thomas. 
to make Grandmother give me an allowance of $100 a month to make me more. Oh, my, isn't it too marvelous? When do we start? I can hardly wait. Oh, Chris, darling. Oh, thank I can go. Isn't it swell? Well, I can't go. It's all off. My father wants me to go in the tractor factory. Me in a tractor factory. Rudy Valet in a boiler factory. Oh, Mac. Well, where is your father? Can't we talk to him? Oh, it won't do any good. We're sailing for Honolulu. <laughs> What are you going to do with a man who says a radio singer is nothing but a yodeler? Which he says and which he is. Oh, Pepe, how can you? Is John McCormick a yodeler? Who said that? No, oh, it's the oh. blathering radio noise. How can anyone yodeler come on ye? Yeah, oh, yodeler, yeah, oh, yodeler. <laughs> but crooning, that's different. Why, the very best music lends itself to crooning. Crooning? Couldn't they call it something else to save its face? Now, take, for instance, uh, let's see, something sweet but uh, really good music. Open the door softly, somebody wants your dee. Give me a chink no wider than you'd fill up with your ear. And if you're hard of hearing, why, your mouth will do as well. So put mm, your lips thick in the chink and hear what I used to tell. What a da da It's a conspiracy. What chance has a man got with the lot of you? What do you say now, Pa? But why go to New York to you? <laughs> Croon, hang it. Why don't you croon in your own home where I can get me hands on you? Ah, but everyone wants to go to New York. New York. I can hardly wait. Well, if you're going, that's another ear to the pig. Here, take your ticket to Honolulu and turn it in. You'll get enough for it to pay uh, for the lot of you to New York. And here's a little more for you. If you're going to croon, I imagine you'll be hungry a good deal of the time. Come on, Madge. Shake a leg. Oh, I'm shaking more than that. I'm going by train. Train? That yes. takes four days. I know what'll fix you up. I've got a quart of it in my bag. Oh, that's the trick. Before you come to, we'll be all the way across the United States. Well, sure. 3,000 miles from the Pacific to the Atlantic in 15 hours. Step right in. Hot and cold meals, radios. Tune in if you want, sleep if you don't. Land where you please, jump out when oh, you please. Oh, shut up, Max. And before you know it, they'll be having hot and cold showers. Oh, Get save the court for me, will you? I may need it. I promise. Feel all right now, Madge? No. Yes. Oh, I don't know. How about a sip out of that quart, hmm? No, I will if... Mac, will you have a drink? Oh, boy, look at that beautiful blonde. Hiya, sugar. <laughs> Subtle, that's me. Turn the radio on for you. What, with me on in person? <laughs> What's the matter? You know who it is. Chris? No, Mac. Oh. Well, of course, I'm crazy about Chris, but it's Mac I love. Afraid you're going to have to make up your mind sometime, dear. Well, I can't help it if that's the way I feel, can I? Can't you sleep either? Nope. Too wide awake. 
There's the silver lining we hear so much about. Just to be able to see it. Just to have sight and feeling. We're ahead of the game already, aren't we, Chris? That's what I was thinking. But you know how to say it. You'll make a writer, Catherine. I'm gonna try. You'll get on too, Chris. You've got a letter to a big law firm in your pocket right now. Yeah. A letter. That's a lot. Shows that someone has faith in you. Can't help feeling worried, though. I wonder what New York will do to us. I wonder what'll become of us when we get there. I wonder. Would you like to have me read your palm? They say a long lifeline can beat most anything. Chris. Hmm? Like the way your hair's cut in the back. That ought to be a great help with the jury. That's New York. My mate. Catherine, it's a monster. I'm scared. So am I. A little. Arrive at Newark Airport in 10 minutes. Fasten your belt, please. Both you wear suspenders. <laughs> that was a subtle one. No band? They're home practicing. Come on. Thank you, sir. Well, we're here. You heard Fiery? No, excited. Boy, did you ever see so many people? Where did they all come from? It's a reception committee. They've heard I'm in town. Hey, taxi. Why not? Hop in. Some town. I always knew it was big, but I didn't think it was this big. Listen, kids, this is just like Walla Walla, only there's a lot more of it. Well, a lot of Walla Wallas are something to worry about. Gee, we'll have to stick together. Poor little engine, sink or swim. Well, I'm not gonna sink. I'm alive enough fish to swim the biggest ocean. Fish don't sink, Zap. No, they just get hooked, cut up, and fried. Or stewed. See, you can't lose. <laughs> Excuse me, folks, huh? Oh, dear. I wonder how I'm ever going to find Phyllis Carmichael. Try looking in the sea. Say, who is this Phyllis Carmichael? Class of 27. She knows everyone in New York worth knowing. Tony Starr, George Gershwin, Old McIntyre. Yes, and she's going to know the McGowan. Vanderbilt. Cornelius Vanderbilt. Right in the telephone book, too. Don't forget the Morgans and the Astors. And the McGowans. Yes, and the McGowans. Oh, hush. Oh, here it is. Carmichael. Mrs. Phyllis. One, number one, Perry Street. 
Give me another nickel. Phyllis says we're going to meet the very best people. Are you sure we're all expected? Well, she said bring the crowd. I didn't know she knew I was in town. Looks like an alley. It is an alley. With a smile okay. when they put you on the spot. Go ahead. Just laugh it off and say, Go ahead, we're invited. Hell is everything. Wealth don't mean nothing. You can still be in style. Just give the best that you've got. If that ain't good enough, so what? Money is the root of all evil. That's what the wise guys say. Don't get your nerves in a state of upheaval. If lucky breaks, don't come your way. Just take it on the chin. Look right up and grin. Life is really worthwhile. Even when things ain't so hot, just laugh it off and say, so what? So what? That old guy hasn't a bad cold. Please, Darling. Hello, Phyllis. How are you? I want you to know Miss Furness. This is Phyllis and Mr. Howard. How do you do? Howard. I want you to meet Miss Roundtree. This is Miss Furness. Mr. Jackson. Oh, darling, come on. Tell me all about it. I want to know everything that's happened. Furness? Yes, they call me Fiery. Fiery? Well, are you? It's the hair. Not the disposition. <laughs> Subtle chap. This is Miss Cohen. Gowan. Uh, Mr. Gowan. Hello. And Mr. Twing. Twing. Yes. Hello. Will you take them around and introduce them? My name is Smith. Oh. Come on, come on. You know, Miss Furness, for purely selfish reasons, I'm glad you like New York. New York. The very name sense shivers up and down my spine. <laughs> I envy you. Oh, it's so big, so immense, so... Cruel, too, they say. But the lights, the people, the rush, the very noise, a symphony. Whose theme is... Uh... Living. Of being part of it all. Oh, Madge, darling, it's so good to have you here. Uh, Phyllis, pardon me. Phyllis, do you think, do you think Mr. Sarg will pay any attention to poor little me? If you're interested in puppet shows, puppets are his line, you know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Jackson, I hear you're interested in the theater. Yes. I'm going on the stage, you know. Oh. Do you think, uh, do you think I'll be any good as an actress? I, I want your, I want your honest opinion. And don't flatter me. Well, I'll be at all your first nights. Is that a promise? Isn't this fun? Maybe. But it isn't what I came to New York for. Chris. Hmm? Well, I'm glad you're here. And I'm glad you're here, Kay. Good, huh? Well, anyway, we're still eating, aren't we? As long as I can keep on eating, I don't want to work. Oh, I'm not worried. We'll all get jobs soon. Sure. When that big shot from Wall Street who wants to meet me gets back from Europe, I'll be all set. Provided he doesn't take a trip to Africa. Meet him at the boat. Well, I start rehearsals tomorrow. Oh, swell. Yeah, how much? Nothing. It's just for the experience. It's a little theater movement Phyllis is starting. Why little movement? <laughs> how about you, Fiery? I'm tired of office boys. So am I. I know every office boy at the IBC personally. Tomorrow I'm going through them like... Well, I'm going through them. Me too. I'm going to start at the top and work down. Meaning what? Arthur Brisbane in person. Just mention my name. I didn't know you knew. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm killing you. <laughs> Mac? I hope that's not Uncle Bill's you got in that bag, Miss Furness. How do you do, Mrs. Vaughn? Oh, 
dear, no. Well, I hope I won't have to speak to you again about cooking in your room. I don't like your house, and I don't like you. You wicked Madge. Well, she is. Don't worry, we won't have to stay here much longer. You could certainly bank on that. I've got a job. Really? And truly. Let me tell you what happened. I got a hunch and went to see a Dr. Kurtzman who gets jobs for babies. What? I, I mean homes for orphans. So I asked him for a home, I mean a job, and he couldn't give me one, but there was a little old lady there, Harriet Orkins, who owns a salvage shop. So she gave me a job for $10 a week, and we can move from here as soon as the rent's up. Look, dinner. Furnace is treating for one. Swell. Who is it? It's me. Chris, I thought it was Mrs. Fogg. What do you think? I don't know. Yes. I don't know. I've got a job. Oh, I'm so happy for think you. Think of it, a job at last. <laughs> and Chris, I've got a Where's job. Madge? In the alcove. Madge? Madge? I've got a job. Really? Well, that's nice. Think of it. It's only $18 a week. Isn't that great? It certainly is. Well, it isn't much, but it's a start. What's the matter? I wonder what it is I have that other people haven't. What do you mean? Kay, sometimes I actually frighten myself. I wonder how many people could do what I did today and do it as easily as I did. What did you do? Come here. Sit down. Now, you're the president of the IBC. I come into you and I say, I'm working for you. And he says, well, who are you? And I say, who am I? <laughs> well, the upshot of the whole thing is, I'm on the Abraham Lincoln Kosher Meat Tower, Irish Ballad. What? I'm $40 a week, every seven days. Oh, Mac, you're wonderful. Say it again. You are wonderful. We could teach the kid to think it. What do you say, Fiery? Oh. <laughs> I'm sorry, Chris. I'm leaving. You're leaving? Well, yes, Kay, I, I, I'm i going to stay with Phyllis. But you can't do this. We promised to stick together. Oh, I can't, can't I? Well, if you think I came to New York to waste my life in a dump like this, you're crazy. I've got to be with the best people, people who can help me along. You understand, don't you, Kay? Oh, of course, Madge. Oh, why not stay for dinner and let's talk it over? Oh, yes, do. Look, I have everything you like. Oh, I, I'm sorry, Kay, but I have another engagement. I wonder if that fellow Jackson's any relation to Stonewall Jackson. Yes, it is, Jackson. And what have you got to say to that? What's anybody got to say to a couple of million dollars? Why, Mac, you... Take that back. Chris, Mac. It's a good thing that guy's a friend of mine. Well, I'd be afraid to hit a man. It'd be murder. I'll send for the rest of my things tomorrow. The rent's paid up until next week, and I'll arrange for you to come and live with us. Oh, that's all right, Madge. I have another place all picked out. Think it over for a day or two. Suspend judgment, will you? I'm sorry, Chris. I have thought it over. Goodbye, everybody. There she goes, unspoiled, unselfish. Always thinking of others, never thinking of herself. March. Mrs. Boggs got on her nerves, I guess. Yeah, just like she'll get on Jackson's. What are you going to do, Farley? Oh, I'll get a room at Mrs. Hawkins. Where? Oh, I didn't tell you, Mac. I got a job there today. Well, that's fine. But you don't have to do that, Farley. What do you mean, Mac? Look. Strong, healthy, not too bad to look at, and 40 smackers each and every week, and that's only a start. Come on. Make Tay Tay happy and say you'll be his daughter-in-law. Sorry, Mac. Awfully sorry. Anything wrong with me? Not a thing. Well, the best of women make mistakes. Chris, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That poor fathead doesn't know what's good for him. Oh, I'm the fathead. Well, Mac, here we are. Four little engines, three little engines, 
Two little engines. Tough all around, isn't it? Come on, you stay and have a bite. Do tomatoes. I can't, baby. I'm due at the broadcasting station. Well, as Tay Pay would say, came for good heart in you. Goodbye. How about a cup of coffee? Mm -mm. Uh-huh, I caught. Thought you could sneak down here without anybody seeing you, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, well. Hello. Oh, so this is the reason you broke a date with me, huh? <laughs> Hiya, Chris. Hello, Mac. Hello, everybody. Well, this is a surprise. Oh, look here, Mac. Well, where have you been hiding? In jail. Why didn't you let me know? I'd have bailed you out. I like jail. I hoped I'd find you here. That's why I made him bring me down. Why didn't you ask me first? But I did. I know, but not in time, dear. I want to ride on the roller coaster. Come along, everybody. Well, don't blame me if your wig falls off. <laughs> Be on the roller coaster, Fiery. Come on, darling, let's ride. Oh, do come, won't you? All right. The girls face the boy. Everybody has a lot of fun. Mighty nice time to do right now while it's not the party. Please don't stand up in the cars and hold your hat. You better put your arm around me. You know those curves. You better hold on. Who was you, Chris? You used to talk about the four of us. And you'd say, Mac loves Catherine, and Madge loves Mac, and you loved Madge. And you never asked, and who's there for Catherine to love? It was always that way. You're my first love, and my only love. And will be till I die. You darling. Wipe your face. Carmen. How is he today? Oh, much better, thanks. Hello, Carmen. Hello. I'll get a job. We'll take a little house in the country. And nothing else will matter. Just the two of us, alone. Are you sure you love me? I am. Are you? Oh, Catherine. What about Madge? Kid stuff. That was on the other side of this sickness, a long time ago. Larry! Chris, what are you doing here so early? Mockby gave me the job. What do you think he said? You're engaged. In fact, my mother and wife engaged you the moment Catherine spoke to them about you. He said, I hope you make good thing because I see no way of firing you as long as my family is lined up against me. Oh, darling. He's going to pay me $30 a week. Just think of it, $30 a week. Well, you're a millionaire. Isn't it great? Now we can get married, right away. Well? What is it? Read it. Will you marry me today? Now? Sure you won't be sorry when you see Madge again. Oh, silly. 
You'll see. Madge! It's me. Well. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Phyllis. Why, like Sears, I'm all in. I'm sorry, Chris, but I had to bring these two vamps with me. I told them where I was going, and here they are. Wrap them up. Oh, that's well. Well, is this all I get? Kiss me. Hello, Kay. I'm sorry, but I had to bring them. I'm glad you did. Hello, Phyllis. Oh, Hello. Kay, darling. Hello, How are you? You look marvelous. Are you really married? There it is. <laughs> she married four flights of stairs. That can't last. I could have set you up on the ground floor. Mm -hmm. Well, if you should ever change your mind, I won't. Am I up for auction? Oh, Chris, I've so much to tell you. You're my lawyer now, you know. Grandmother died. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't do anything without a retainer, Chris. Well, here it is. Oh, well, now about dinner. I think I'd better go in. Oh, get... no, I'll go. It's my fault you have a crowd. Well, I'll go. Go where? Oh, I know a swell place, Italian. The food is fine. I'm going to take you all out to dinner. I like a nice, subtle speakeasy where a man looks through the door and you say, Mr. Gilholy, sir. <laughs> that was really good old days. Well, I'll go and get my things. Chris, why do you use the money? Shh. I'll fill it up again. Don't worry. It's not the money I'm worried about. Miss Roundtree to see you, sir. Uh, show her in. Yes, sir. Hello, Madge. This is a surprise. A nice one, I hope. Very. Won't you sit down? Mm, nice office. My, you do look important sitting there. But I don't feel important. Ah, oh, don't be so businesslike, Mr. Thring. This is a business office. But I'm not just business, am I? That's too deep a legal problem for me. I'll have to look it up. But seriously, Madge, what are you doing down here? Well, if you're going to be such a brute, you may as well take me to lunch. All right. Let's go. Hello, Catherine. Now, first, I've got an important luncheon engagement. Oh, but, Chris, it's Saturday. You always come home for lunch Saturday. I'm sorry, darling, but this is business. Now, here's where you come in. Are you listening? We're invited up to the boss's house at Scarsdale for the weekend. It's about the Gillespie case I've been working on. Oh, but, Chris, what'll I wear? Sackcloth and ashes if you make any mistakes. Now, listen. In the top drawer of the desk, there's a legal envelope with some papers. It's a brief I've made on the case. Pack that and the law book on top of the desk. We're taking the 210. I'll meet you at the information desk at the Grand Central Station. Bye. Why can't I see Chris occasionally? Because he's my husband, and I love him. So do I. I wrote you that before you married him. I showed him your letter. You could have had him once. Why didn't you love him then? Crazy, I guess. So I'm to step aside because you've changed your mind. I could have had him. You nursed him and he turned to you. He was sick because he'd lost me. So that's the way you think I got him. Please, Catherine, don't take that tone. I can't help it if I love him, can I? I want to do things for him. But with all the money I have now, I could help him in his profession. He ought to be living in that slum. We're leaving this afternoon for the weekend. But I want to tell you we'll miss that slum and be glad to get back to it. So you get him away from me if you can. Is that a challenge? Yes. Well, then, Chris is coming here to lunch. So if he goes on that weekend, you win.
Saturday evening post. Hello, Madge. Chris. Darling, is it really you? It isn't very businesslike, is it? No, <laughs> you silly. I've got a cocktail all fixed. I mixed it myself. I hope it's good. You made enough for a party. You're all the party I want, Chris. I'd better go easy on this. I've got to catch a train at 2 o'clock. Oh, well, come on, then. Lunch is all ready. I've got everything you like. Cold chicken and, and sardines and salad. And I fixed it all. You love me a little, Chris. You used to. Say, uh... What was this business you wanted to see me about? You haven't forgotten, have you? Well, you said it had something to do with your grandmother's estate. No, I don't mean that. I mean, you haven't forgotten that I... that we... Oh, Chris, you still do a little, don't you? What are you thinking about? Nothing. It's Catherine, isn't it? Yes. I'm late. I'll miss my train. Oh, please, Chris. Listen. No. No, you can't go. I won't let you. She took you when you were sick and miserable. Madge, I've got to go. Oh, Chris. What's a filthy old train after all I've... Oh, Chris, I love you. I love you so much. Now, Don't Madge, you look here. L listen to me, oh, please. It doesn't mean anything to you. Oh, Mac. Oh, Mac. Oh, Chris. Oh, Jackson. Oh, George Washington. Oh, Henry VIII. Oh, Mac, please listen. Come on inside and think of a good one. I've got a cocktail all me. I missed it myself. I hope you like it. Now, what did you send for me for? I'm through with Chris. He said the most awful things to me. Well, what do you want me to do? Say them all over again? Oh, Mac, Listen, darling. just what do you want, a man or a husband? Well, you can't have them both. Oh, can't I? No. Then I want you. Listen, you're on probation. One more peep out of you and I'll... Oh, Mac. Well, I might as well tell you now. Peggy Joyce is after me, and that's only one. Mac, darling. Subtle, that's me. Thank <laughs> you. 